do you have a story about James Joyce? I think most of us have a story about James Joyce. And this is my story about James Joyce. It actually starts with Pogo, and then we meet the man himself, and then we conclude with the sketchbook book on which I'm working at the moment. So let's get started. So I've been talking a lot about some of these older comic strips, some of these vintage comic books. Um, we'll be talking more about Lil Abner, but we've all already talked a little bit about Crazy Cat and a bit more about Walt Kelly's Pogo. Now Pogo has a lot of puns, it's got a lot of language games, and it's written in sort of a uh, vaudevillian uh, dialect, uh, which never existed in, in the real life self. In some ways, Walt Kelly was the James Joyce of the comic pages from about uh, f 1948 to 1973. Well, I read a whole bunch of Pogo uh, when I was young. Now, once upon a time, when I was a little older, I decided I'm going to read a whole bunch of books. Now, I lived in a place where there were several used bookstores, and I used to go to used bookstores and just buy armfuls of books. And sometimes uh, the proprietors, they would give me discounts that sometimes I think they just wanted to get rid of uh, some of their merchandise. For instance, I have a ginormous Sanskrit dictionary. It's the Sir uh, Munir, Munir Williams uh, dictionary. It, it weighs about um, 3,000 pounds. I think the guy let me have it just, just if I could carry it out of the store. It was one of those, if you can carry it, you can have it. I think I only paid like $5 or $8 or something for it. Anyway, I did a lot of reading, and one of the stores uh, where, uh, where I lived at the time uh, was a little uh, sort of a Celtic paraphernalia store. It was a store that sold kilts and uh, iron brew and statues and, and, and things like that, um, and it had a little book section. It was run by a young couple, and sometimes they would give me discounts because I would hang around a lot. And and, um, and in some ways, I was like a store mascot. I was a store store mascot for a lot of places. Well, anyway, this was at a time when I was reading everything I could get my hands on, and so one day I decided, you know, I'm going to read James Joyce because I've heard about James Joyce before. I've read some of him in school, and I obviously knew about James Joyce from Walt Kelly because that comparison is often made. So I got the Dover Thrift Edition from that little, uh, little Celtic store, a portrait of the artist, and I did uh, some research as I read it. Now, uh, back then, uh, uh, one easy way to get into a book was to read the Cliff Notes. The Cliff Notes not only had a summary, but the Cliff Notes also discusses uh, themes of the book and usually tells a little bit about the author and things like that. Um, also at that time period, uh, the, the internet uh, did exist, uh, but it mainly existed in terms of uh, uh, email uh, lists and four and things like that. So I was subscribed to a couple of lists and I was reading about what people had to say about James Joyce. So, Red Portrait, all right, that's fine. And then at a used bookstore, I got Stephen Hero, which is basically an early draft or early version of that novel. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming I remember every, everything close enough. Um, well, let's just for the, for the sake of the story, let's let's assume that's close enough. So it's sort of an, an an early version, or maybe an alternate universe of 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 uh, of a young Stephen. So anyway got through portrait. So I thought, well, this James Joyce train, let's let's keep it going. So then I thought, well, let's get to the main event, Ulysses. Now, Ulysses, I made sure to get as a hardback because I knew it would take me a long time to read it and I would have to carry it with me in a lot of pla to a lot of places. And I ended up doing that. I think it took took a while to get through it. And I carried this book around. I took the cover off. Uh, with me on on the bus and trips and things like that, and once again, I I had to rely on the internet for some help to get through the book. I had the Cliff Notes to help. The Cliff Notes are fairly substantial, and this really good uh, study book, which helped me a lot. And I ended up 
having to be the summary and then the chapter. And sometimes I would read the chapter two or three times. Um, and, and even then, I'm, I'm not really sure I understood everything, but maybe if I understood half of it or maybe just in broad themes, I, I would consider that a win. So I definitely got through Ulysses um, with a bit of hard work. And then I thought, well, two down, let's let's uh, see if we can't do a victory run. Finnegan's Wake. Now, I <laughs> I really love this cover. This is from the Book of Kells. And one thing I, I, about the Book of Kells is that I, I have some affinity with it. I, I often think that if I had been born uh, a thousand years ago, I would have been one of the monks working on the Book of Kells because... Illuminated manuscripts were a whole lot like comics, and I would have been one of the jokers to do just completely bizarre, baffling drawings, illuminations. It, it, I mean, this you can see how crazy I, I draw today, and it would have been the same thing a thousand years ago. So, I knew that Finnegan's Wake was going to be very difficult, so I figured I'm going to have to do an extra amount of research. So, from that same used bookstore, I got The Skeleton Key to Finnegan's Wake. Yes, Joseph Campbell, uh, from Hero of a Thousand Faces, is one of the authors. And then I had to go online for a couple of other uh, resources. Annotations to Finnegan's Wake. And, um, well, let's, let me show you that in a second. Um, a Reader's Guide. A plot summary, and then, uh, actually, I think this is another Ulysses book, um, down here. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's Ulysses, forget about that. So, why did I need all of these plot summaries and things for Fitting Against Wake? Well, in the same way that Pogo is written in sort of a vaudevillian dialect, Fitting Against Wake is also written in a dialect. But unlike Kelly, who was uh, communicating in a, a semi-consistent dialect, Finnegan's Wake is written in a dialect which is dreaming itself into being... Oh, my bookmark's still there. I'll get to the bookmark in a second. So, the l <laughs> how to describe this? If you already know James Joyce, you already know this. Um, but it's a... a a version of English which is completely, completely changes itself uh, as it goes. So it's, it says the, the syntax, it has the grammar of English and the cadence of English, but the words are blended with words from different languages to the ear of an English speaker. I'm not sure that made a lot of sense, but I, I, <laughs> it may be easier for you to look up an Read the Wikipedia article in Finnegan's Wake. I'm not sure I can describe it. But anyway, these this version of English has words which are um, blended in or make references to words from other languages or even or other stories. Oh, there's my receipt. Okay. And so... Oh, he even... Okay, this is fun. Look at all these different languages that Joyce used. Um, and I'm just going to pick out uh, Esperanto, because that's funny, and, um, uh, Volopuk, which is hilarious. But anyway, so, uh, this would, <laughs> how, these annotations have the word in the text, and then next to it, sort of a key as to what that may be referencing, and the way this is placed on the page is a map for the page in the book, at least in sort of a standard edition. So, uh, oh my goodness, this is like real work here. So if one were reading, say, the first page, and, uh, okay, and one sees these different words, commodious, and then we can see here in the annotations that that is a reference to Commodus, the Roman emperor. Um, vicus or vicus, Latin for street or village. Also vicious as in circle. 
um, it's sort of a, a back and forth situation. I mean, one could make a giant book and just have these as the annotations on the side, of course. Um, but I'm just putting this out as in all of these references and all of these books, and I made an honest attempt to read Finnegan's Wake. I read plot summaries, I read reader's guides, I read the skeleton key, and all that stuff. And so I would have books open, and I would try to read this thing sentence by sentence. And I, I got a few pages in, and it hurt my brain, and then, I don't know, a couple weeks passed, and then I tried again, I got a little farther, but it hurt my brain, and I, I think... I think I tried at least three times, and the third time, the bookmark is still there, I was able to get to page 39, 38 or 39. So I was able to, after three attempts and all of these reference books, I, I got a good 35 pages into Finnegan's Wake before I surrendered. Anyway, just, just to give you an idea, let's look at the first sentence. So one can see uh, this type of literature, if one is not familiar, it's hard to read through the phone, River Run past even Adams, from Swerve of Shore to Bend of Bays, brings us by Commodius Vicus of Recirculation back to Health Castle and Environs. Sir Tristram, Violer Damores, for over the short sea, had Passancor re-arrived from North Armorica, on this side the scraggy isthmus of Europe Minor, to we wielder fight his peninsulate war. Nor had Top Sawyer's rocks by the stream Okany exaggerated themselves to Lawrence County's Gorgias, while they went Dublin their mumper all the time, etc., 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 and we finally come to the fall. Babbitt, uh, this is actually a word I have used in my comics before. It's the word that means I am the sound of thunder in every language. Anyway, I tried very diligently, and unfortunately, Finnegan's Wake was my Waterloo. However, I, I am glad that I tried very hard to, to read Finnegan's Wake, and that I did succeed in reading Portrait, and I did read Ulysses, I'm, I'm not sure I completely understood it, but I did a very valiant attempt. But these memories of going to used bookstores and searching for things, and sometimes having to go to the library and go on the internet, those memories still stay with me, and they do appear in my comics, because this place, this papyrus and stationery store is based upon the used bookstore where I got probably half of these books. And while drawing this, and later on when I paint this next month, I will remember those, uh, those bookshelves and the smell of old books and all of that. In this drawing, you can see sort of a memory of sort of the, uh, <laughs> the platonic bookstore, which is organized and disorganized at the same time. This one has, this drawing has an attractive window, so there will probably be lots of blue paint there. Um, these used bookstores were not quite that open, they were crowded and dusty, but, you know, the alchemy of memory um, uh, changes things and turns them into art. So I may never be a, an expert on literature, and certainly not on James Joyce, but I do have a lot of appreciation for him, and I, of course, intend to study all of these classic comics, not just for their artwork, but also for the way they tell stories and use language. Anyway, that is my James Joyce story, and yes, I do have a James Joyce puppet to inspire me to do things. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.